Hi, I'm supposed to be on YouTube break right now. It's January, but I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to make a video real quick. I'm actually stealing this idea from Scott Kramer, who at the end of every year goes back and reacts to all the videos they made. And I think that's great because there's a lot of things I want to talk about. Well, we could start at the start. A lot of people have been asking to see my Switch collection. The thing is when you make a video about like your collection in 2023, it's a very outdated idea for a video. So you kind of have to spice it up a little bit. So I titled it World's Largest Nintendo Switch Game Collection, which upset a lot of people. <laughs> mostly on Twitter. Let's see how long it takes me in this video to address the title. This is the world's largest Nintendo Switch collection, and that is probably a lie. Six seconds for me to address the fact that I'm well aware it's not, it's definitely not the largest. It's the largest on YouTube. If you type in Nintendo Switch game collection, oh, hi, Scott. 50 games, 250 games, 200. My video from five years ago, 200 games, 600 games. That's a big one. You get my point. But then I uploaded it and people on Twitter were like, my dad works at Nintendo and he has a million games. I'm sure there's people out there that have every single Switch game. They just might not have a YouTube channel and they're not making videos about it. And by the way, when I address things like that, know that I am very aware that 100% of people actually don't care about that and loved the video. This one was a favorite. I had my friend E come down from New York to help me film this. I didn't want it to feel like a Mr. Beast video. And I kind of said that to everybody going in, but it just ended up feeling Mr. Beasty, especially when I gave it to my editor. He was like, how do I edit this? Do I edit it like normal? And I was like, no, I really want it to be like fast, like fast, 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 fast. I want to keep people's attention. This is the kind of video that I want people to find my channel on. So just make it super fast. And then once he did that, I watched it back and I was like, man, this is very Mr. Beasty. <laughs> I actually made a friend watch this video recently and the whole time he was watching it, he was like, what did you do with all the Switch games? And it was so rewarding to get to the end of the video and have someone in real time, I'm watching their reaction to me giving them all away and being so happy. Yeah, it just made me feel really good. I'd do it again if it wasn't for the fact that I've already done it. So it seems silly to do it twice. These glasses have been a cool thing this year. They were not a sponsor the first time I tried them out. They're not a sponsor and I know that because Raycon is the sponsor <laughs> and you can't have two in one, that's illegal. So I just did a whole video about how cool they were because why wouldn't I? And then they were like, hey, loved the video. Can we sponsor you? And now they've become a regular sponsor and I have a pretty good relationship with Vitcher. So that was really nice. This video is sponsored by Vitcher. And I have been so excited to open this box because they said they were sending a new pair of glasses. Oh, don't tell me they're white. Oh, I like the white ones. Yo, that's sick. Something I love about them a lot is right out the box, they just work. They don't have batteries. You don't need to charge them. They draw power from whatever console you plug them into. So if I plug this into my Steam Deck, you'll see it throw like it's being docked and it goes straight into my glasses. There's a sound control on the left here as well as brightness. And the sound is really awesome. It's Harman sound, they collaborated. And it's like a reverse sound so that no matter how loud it is, only you can hear it. So right now there is a giant screen right in front of my face showing me the Death Stranding title screen. It works on Steam Deck, on Switch, on my phone, on consoles. Vitcher has already become the premium choice among XR AR glasses and won awards for their product design and innovation. Best part about these glasses is that they're almost $100 cheaper. That's a lot more affordable than before. They're white because initially the Kickstarter color was white. They're really stressing in here that the white ones are super limited and you can only get them on Vitcher's website. So I'll leave a link below. There's also a white neck band as well. And while you're there, you can grab a Vitcher One Beat-em-ups lens shade. I told you guys about these already, but they're perfect if you just want to completely black out everything in front of your eyes and just focus on the screen, which is really cool. And they do look nice with the white one as well. Thank you, Vitcher, for sponsoring the video. Grab a pair of these down below. Okay, here's an interesting one. This is me changing my mind on something. I spent $200 on the PlayStation 
portal and I'm not sure why. I have completely come around on this thing to the point where I actually thought about doing another video, but I think I just want to talk about it here. I don't disagree with my video at all. In fact, my video still stands. It's just, I got mine to work now and it's awesome. Here's what I had to do. When I got the PlayStation portal, you can watch the video. It was a nightmare. It was so laggy. 50% of the time it didn't work. And anytime I tried it out of the house, it just didn't work. I have good internet here and I have a brand new Verizon router that was delivered to my house when I moved in a year ago. So in my mind, I was like, I have everything I need, but the internet upstairs was really spotty. I decided I wanted to fix that issue. So I bought an Asus ROG combo thing. You can watch Bob's video about it because that's where I got the idea and he helped me set it up. Not only did it straighten out all of my internet throughout the whole house, it's like fantastic now for Wi-Fi, but this was working now just by changing out the router. The reason why I think the video I made still stands is, well, obviously you shouldn't have to buy a $600 router to fix it, but this router is the same router that Bob has and the PlayStation portal did not work for him. He had the same shoddy connection issues and lag that I was experiencing. So why it fixed it for me and didn't fix it for him, I don't know. This product is just too sketchy and there's too many variables to recommend it. And what I had is what I feel like most people are going to have in their house. It's just a generic router. I played last night for two hours without a single hiccup. I even took it to my friend Kip's house and I was playing it at his house. It was a little spotty, but it was actually very playable. I could have just kept playing. I hate that it took that to fix it, but now that it's working for me, I've definitely been getting a lot of use out of it. Oh, you know what we should talk about? How I faked getting the Zelda OLED Switch early. This video might be the best and worst video I've ever made. I am so proud of this video. And in some ways, I do regret making it. My intention was to confuse people, but it was to have the payoff. Oh, he was just kidding around. He didn't actually fake it. Wow, that's really cool. He had me going there for a minute. But sadly, people watched the video for like four or five minutes while I'm setting up how I lied. And they never got to the end about how I'm lying about lying. And there is literally hundreds of people that honestly think I faked getting that switch. Beat em ups, faked Zelda Nintendo Switch. I'm not even kidding. All I did was Google faked Zelda Nintendo Switch beat em ups. My video got shared to Reddit and someone was like, how did he manage to get it? He faked it. He published a video on it yesterday. I hate this guy. Reddit sucks. This dude is a hoarder. I got sick of watching him buy and accept from fans mountains of stuff. I don't even do that anymore. Before I was a YouTuber and even after, I used to love watching fan mail videos. Like pay money wobbies are some of the best on the internet. And when I became a content creator, I was like, I want to do fan mail videos. And when I was small, people loved sending me fan mail. When I had like a thousand subs, not a single complaint. Everyone was super supportive. Quickly, as my channel blew up, it soured. Because now that my channel was doing well, me getting free stuff from my fans was considered scummy. It was e-begging. It got too much and I just stopped. And it does suck because people ask me all the time to bring back the fan mail videos anyway. Also, people thought that I only made this video because Nintendo was like threatening me legally. And I was like, oh no, it's fake. Don't worry. This is how I faked it. Even though at the end of the video, I'm like, I'm lying. It's not fake. It's real. A reason why it was so convincing is because the one I got early was from the UK. So the box was different. That's what gave me the idea initially. It even fooled Bob, which I took as a sign that I did a good job because if even Bob was fooled, then yeah, that was pretty convincing until obviously he saw the point where I'm like, I'm lying. I want to do more things like that this year. Fun, creative ideas. I'll stay away from pretending that I lied though. That one can take a rest. All right, let's see what else. Oh, me buying every Nintendo Switch console. That video ended up doing really well. Two million views. That might've been my best video of the year view wise. I was very excited to make this video. One, just to buy every Switch. But then as I was looking for all the Switches, finding this Thunderbolt Project one, it came out of nowhere. I didn't expect that. And then to go on this whole journey of trying to find it and then just happening to find one on a random clothing website in Australia and then opening it in the video, like it went from just me trying to order things online and open them to a whole journey saga adventure that ended in the best way possible. In the video where I faked getting the Zelda Switch, I had it in the video where I also faked getting this Switch. But no, I definitely didn't fake either of these. They're both very real Switches. This was like the only really drama thing I involved myself in this year. There was some channel that made a video about why YouTubers should 
shouldn't ever review video games. My Pokemon review was kind of the main focus of that video. Asmongold and the Act Man reacted to that guy reacting to my video. And I guess I just kind of jumped in because it felt like for the first time I was being defended. Is this guy... Yes, whatever you're about to say, Asmund, yes, he is. And in a way, I wanted to thank them. Thanks for having my back on that one. But I also thought it was just an interesting thing to talk about because it is interesting that that Pokemon game is that bad that I could make a video pointing out why it's so bad. And there were still so many people defending it and then people making whole videos about how I shouldn't even talk about the game. There was a whole section of that video where I was very positive about Pokemon, but the game's a mess and we have to talk about it or else it's never gonna change and and it's never gonna get better. We had a bunch of direct reactions. I've really tried over the last couple of years moving away from news rant style videos. They're definitely some of the best views I've gotten on the channel over the years, but creativity wise, they always just felt kind of like throwaway videos for me. So I really tried to move away from it. And really the only newsy reaction-y type videos I make these days are just about Nintendo Directs. Oh, this would be a great one to talk about. Man, I don't even know how much I wanna get into it right now. So 11 months ago, Kim and I made the We're Not Okay video, and man, we won't. I'm gonna talk about me, because Kim's not here. After moving here, I had a big psychotic breakdown. <laughs> it's not funny, but I didn't, I just, I laugh when things are awkward. I was trying to work through this insane amount of anxiety that I was dealing with. I was becoming immobile, where I was terrified to leave the house. Long story short, the January break didn't go very well, actually. I was making a little bit of progress to begin with, and then by the end, I had like a whole week where I thought I was just gonna have a heart attack and I was just lying in bed, just arms crossed, legs crossed and just breathing. I was like, okay, I need to get help because this isn't getting any better. We went to the doctor and I got some medicine. I'm so glad I did. I've learned recently when you're in that state, you just need a break. You just need something to help you lower your guard and calm down and remember what it feels like to just feel, and I'm going to say normal, even though my therapist has told me that anxiety is not not normal, but to feel like your normal self again. And I think you know what I mean by that. It it took months after that of working on getting outside and using the medication in a way to help me function my day-to-day -day life. And it led all the way up to me going to Japan. Being in Japan and being away from home really retrained my brain and taught me that I didn't need safe spaces all the time. I didn't need to be close to the home or close to my car. And that really woke my brain up. And Kim, she's doing a lot better too. So thank you all so much for the support. Oh, I did not expect that to get so deep. Oh, I mean, Tears of the Kingdom came out. I played the whole game on stream. And if you want to watch that, actually, go here. The entire playthrough was uploaded. That was so much fun. It was a whole production. And I want to do that again this year. When that game came out, I knew I'd be stuck doing those playthroughs. I knew it was going to be forever before I got my review out. So for the first time, really, I did a first impressions video. And the funny thing is, the one hour long video that took me like a month to make, I filmed it in three separate locations. I filmed it on green screen. I went to an actual cave here in Pennsylvania. I also went to some old abandoned ruins and filmed in front of those, which was really scenic. A whole music number at the end. An hour long video that took me too long to make ended up getting less views than my first impressions. They're about equal and it's fine. I'm glad that I did the first impressions because of that. Because it kind of feels like I got like a million views on my Zelda review. Maybe I need to do more first impression videos. <laughs> Maybe that's what I'm getting out of this. There was actually a lot of people that unsubbed from me and I'm not even kidding you're gonna think I'm lying because they thought I was coming out as gay and so they unsubbed because gay I'm not joking at this point I have to imagine I've gained subs from the video oh my god no nope. this one has 257 kind of an equal video let's see how many subs I gain on this 437 I lost so many subs on that video because people thought I was coming out as gay with Bob I love this video and the title was obviously a spin on my girlfriend buys. This is my friend that's a boy buys, but I also just thought that was a funny title. People are weird, man. I would be remiss if I didn't at least mention my trip to Japan. I think I love them more than the first ones. I mean, the first ones are special because it's the first time I've been to Japan. I think next time we do Japan, I want all new stuff, all new places. I do like how it all led up to going to Nintendo World and staying in the Nintendo Hotel. So much fun. I mean, I don't want to end on a negative, but some people 
people did get upset at that title. Like the comments were fine. The likes were completely normal. People on Twitter got upset. They took a screenshot here. I was sent the Switch 2 without the thumbnail. And they were like, this YouTuber is lying and doing clickbait. He did not get sent the Switch 2. Because if you don't know who I am, if you don't have the context of the thumbnail and you just share a screenshot of a title and a random image, and then you act like I'm trying to say I actually got the Switch 2 in the whole video, then yeah, it looks like clickbait. But then you see the whole thing and you see that I'm holding a console that has Joy-Cons and was designed to act like a Switch, but be more powerful, e.g. a Switch 2, then it makes a lot more sense. I'll concede that compared to really all my other titles, weird Switch accessories on Amazon, 10 free Switch games, I'll concede that compared to all of those, this one is definitely more extravagant. I would argue that it's good clickbait and we could argue good clickbait and bad clickbait till the cows come home, but I'm not lying about anything here. I think you know exactly what you're getting into. If I have a video where I've got to make something on a Lenovo Legion Go, which isn't Nintendo, my channel and my audience know nothing about this thing. I've got to give my viewers a reason to be interested. So I was letting my viewers know, hey, this thing, it's like a Switch, but it's like a better one. So if you like the Switch, but you want something more powerful, here's this thing. And my viewers go, oh, I wonder what that is. Let me click on it. Oh, Lenovo Legion Go, that thing's interesting. And if you think I'm fabricating any of that, just go to the comments. Crazy to see how far we've come on gaming. Definitely going to keep this one on my radar. Handhelds are getting better and better. Actually looks sick. These people are learning about this thing through me, but the buy-in point for them was that it's like the Switch. That's the whole reason I wanted the thing, and it's why I put it in the thumbnail for everybody to see. That's everything I wanted to talk about. It actually feels really cathartic to get all of that out there. I will say real quickly for my audience, if you if you love my content, this message is for you. I want to do better this year. Last year, I was dealing with a lot of mental health stuff and my priority was fixing myself. So I spent a lot of time just trying to get out of the house and do something every day, even if it was little. It affected how much time I had to make videos. I don't know if it came across, but I feel like the content was pretty light. And I want to definitely do better this year now that I have my head on my shoulders a bit more. I want to really dive into making some cool content with some cool ideas and cool concepts. My normal content, like just buying fun Etsy things, I want to find ways to spice that up and make that more interesting. And if we get the Switch 2 this year, I mean, I'll be set. But if not, I've got to get creative because we're going into like the seventh year of making Switch content. I'm going to keep streaming on Twitch too. And if you want to join me over there, I also make the same promise to Twitch. I want to do things bigger and better over there too. The last thing I'll say is my podcast. All this time for 84 episodes in a year and a half. I've been doing it with Bob Wolf from Wolf Den, but he quit. He up and left me. I've decided to keep going and I'm doing it on my own. I'm essentially going to have two channels moving forward, this one and my podcast channel. And the first episode of the new era will be February 1st. I would love if you guys could go subscribe and watch that. Big, cool things happening this year, and I'm excited for all of them. Thank you so much for everything you've ever done for me and for the last year of content. I love you all. And after I'm done with this short YouTube break, I'll be back.